America are self-inflicted. This ain't the Klan. This ain't white racism. This ain't some white man behind a tree with a remote control. 80% or maybe even higher of the problems that stalk black America are self-inflicted and they're problems that black people could solve themselves, but they're just too lazy. And they're looking for somebody else to come and look. They're looking for a great savior. They're looking for another Martin Luther King. They're looking for somebody else to come along and save them and tell them what to do. This is what y'all waiting on. This is the reason why when you talk to, excuse me, when you talk to black people and you try to explain to them, hey, listen, man. Many of these problems that y'all talking about, y'all doing to yourselves. I mean, all you have to do is just look at black men. And you will know for yourself that there's something wrong here. How these brothers go, how these brothers go after each other, how these brothers behave towards one another. They don't know how to interact with each other. They don't know how to disagree without being violently disagreeable. This is black men. And I've told y'all again, which again, I know y'all don't like this. The reason why so many black men don't know how to interact with other black men is because they were reared by single women. And for the most part, black women don't know how to interact with black men. They just don't. And challenges you to say, listen, man, you protested and marched when George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin. Shouldn't you do the same for Pookie shooting Ray Ray? Legitimate question. Good question. But no, the Negro will sit back and say, you are Uncle Tom. You are Seller. You are cool. For asking the question. A very legitimate, logical and good question. Why is it that you black people protested and marched from sea to shining sea over George Zimmerman shooting Trayvon Martin? But y'all have not marched when it's Pookie killing Ray Ray. Why? When it's Skillet gunning down Hambone. Why? Where are the marches? Where are your black civil rights organizations? Where are the black pastors? Where are the black churches? This is what we've seen during Trayvon Martin. Where is Barack Obama? Where is Tom Joyner? Where is Michael Bazden? Where are all these shines who had so much to say? In the George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin fiasco, but now as black men continue an ongoing genocide, you don't hear a peep from black folk. Good question. Why is that? But instead of the Negro being able to answer that, what the Negro will do is say, well, you're asking that question because you're Uncle Tom. You're a coon. And so what the Negro does, because the Negro don't read for the most part, they don't read. They simply don't read. And again, it goes back to the old saying that, you know, if you want to hide a secret from a Negro, put it in a book. And the old story was told of the, the, the wife who wanted to hide the rent money from her husband. And she put it in a book and sat it on the coffee table. And that shine tore that house up looking for where his wife hid that money. He never thought to look in the book. It's sitting right there in the book and wide open. He never thought to crack that book. And that's black folks for the most part. Because they won't read. And then when you come to them and you tell them, listen, you, you call people coons, but you use it out of context. I mean, you sit back and say that this person is a coon or this person is cooning, and it happens to be somebody that you disagree with. But when you look at it in context, you're using it inappropriately. And when you try to explain this to this Negro, again, you might as well, don't, don't try to use the facts when talking to black, black folks. So now, cool has simply become 
a person who I disagree with. If I disagree with you, you're a coon. Has nothing to do with the historical reference of what a coon is. Because if that's the case and you want, you want it to be historically accurate in calling someone a coon, then you have to ask the question, why are dope dealers coons? Why? I mean, you know, at some point, you know, really, it, it becomes old. Because black people, again, like I said, are their own worst enemies and they don't want to hear this. They don't want. This is the reason why they're so butthurt. This is the reason why they're so angry because they don't want somebody to tell them, listen, Negro, this is your fault. You can clean this up if you wanted to. But you would rather sit back and clown and coon and buffoon and run around here and, and you know, create all kinds of havoc and mayhem. You Not don't want to address Just like making videos. And I'm on a path to intellectualism. I'm on a path to enlightenment. Now, and I'm not there yet. So therefore, I said, I have to go someplace where I can get the teachings of an intellectual master. So therefore, I revisited some of David Carl's videos seeing if I missed something the first time because this is the self-proclaimed intellectual juggernaut and his fan base has no gripes with him uh, of this moniker intellectual juggernaut uh, so I'm, I'm going to observe it with an open mind now I would say that as far as the greater man, uh, the greater men, I have to give them kudos for the ability to work together and connect together, and um, and not argue amongst each other. Not like the the part of YouTube, which the the corner of YouTube that I'm part of, you know. And uh, you know that's because this corner people are fighting for views, and this corner is a poor representation of black folks. That's why black people don't re really want to watch this crap anymore. That's why people barely get in views. You know, so, so people can't take it seriously. So therefore, as I said, I'm on the path to intellectualism. So I had to sit back and I had to observe and really. Uh, take in his message, you know, observe his pearls of wisdom. And what I got is the same that I've always got watching his videos was a bunch of bullocks. Um, <laughs> and now it's like, um, I, I, it's like I'm like, I sit back and I say, that there's no this there's no way this guy is an uh, intellectual. Now I chose this video to focus on because I say I didn't I didn't watch his videos with the intent of doing any sort of rebuttal. But you know me when I hear uh, a whole lot of hogwash, a whole lot of statements that I can easily deconstruct and disassemble. I'm going to turn the camera on and I'm going to do it. Now, this is probably my how to be an intellectual part two. In no way and I, am I saying that I'm of this, of a of really high intellectual caliber. Now, there are some. There's two that I can think of that uh, their videos completely mesmerize me. And that's Inferic Impact and Thunderfoot. If you watch these two guys' uh, videos, their wordplay, their, uh, the way they break things down is nothing short of uh, beautiful. So, but um, 
upon uh, ingesting David Carl's uh, masterful classics and so forth, I I can't help but be offended, cause you know, like his his argument, and and, it, and it's an easy one. Because he puts black people in a big box, all in a Sherlock sack. You know, he got them all figured out. Anything you want to know about black people and black people's behavior, just ask David Curl. He will have a what he will consider a infallible answer. If you want to know why. Jello pudding pops didn't catch on to black people as much as they did with white people even though they was endorsed by Bill Cosby he will have that answer but you know I particularly chose this video which was uh, he published on August 7 2014 which isn't that old and it was Al Charlatan and the, the, the measure of the, the value of a black life part 2 now, uh, you can check that video out for yourself. And this video pretty much uh, rounds uh, David Carl up in a nutshell uh, because he's known to repeat himself. Now, I understand that he says repetition is the mother of skill, but repetition could be symptoms of dementia also. Now, it's like a, a hamster or a gerbil or any other furry creature on a running wheel at this point. And if you believe that black people are a monolithic group of people that can easily be grouped together, you know, then it's very easy and black people are the easiest people to criticize probably in human history and they're also the people that's most likely to accept criticism, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, nod their head, yeah, 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 that's the truth, yeah, yeah, that's the truth. You see black people in church, yeah, yeah, that, that, he speaks the truth, he speaks the truth. Black people listening to rap music, yeah, yeah, he speaks the truth, he speaks the truth. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, so, you know, so we, we, we get this notion, okay. You know, and um, the thing is, the fact that there are black homosexuals, that there are black men that prefer sausage, rather than pink cookies in a plastic bag you know already lets you know blacks are not on the same page let me repeat myself if there's black people black men who prefer sausage over pink cookies in a plastic bag you know that, that lets you know that you know this doesn't mean that all black people have to think agree alike that you know what I'm saying that has to use the same problem solving methods you know it just lets you know so therefore this theory of, of uh, grouping black people together and then you know what I'm saying pointing your finger you know said that's null and void and uh, as me um, I was offended by it because it seems like his rhetoric is a assault on those black people that are doing well that's not a part of this degenerative culture and it's like okay now I'm supposed to hold my head in shame and because of what some black people I don't know doing in some city that I never visit now I that's why I call it the black commonwealth I understand that blacks have a lot in common you know no, no matter where you see them in this country but black people, or the black people you see today, did not erect from some vortex where we all just came from the same conditions. You know, we all, we, you know, so we all had this same fair share. We all had, you know, you know, parents, you know, of, of equal income. You know, <laughs> our, our our experience was different, so our outlook is going to be different. So, but, you know, as I said, black people are the easiest people to scrutinize. It's very easy. And they're accepted. They've been conditioned, you know, this way. And um, I'm going to start my series, uh, uh, The Psychological Warfare on the Black Mind. Uh, that's going to be coming out soon. So, uh, look, look out for that. Okay, now, going into David Carl's argument there. Now, he talks about Kuhn. 
which I agree with him that we loosely use that word, a lot of blacks, when he says that, you know, any person that disagrees with you, you call him a coon. Now, he doesn't, and there's people that don't know the historical reference of it. Now, um, I do. Now, I used to use that word, but I stopped using it. You know, I just did some research, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you're learning something new every day. But his, the weight of that argument collapsed due to the fact that he misused the word minstrel. Anybody that disagrees with him, he calls them a minstrel. You know, what is a minstrel? It's a minstrel show. It's a guy who puts a, a white guy or a black guy putting on black face and, and so forth. But, you know, he's called people this name. Uh, he gave people this title simply for disagreeing with his own uh, uh, stance on things. And then we go into the Trayvon Martin thing, which he loves bringing this up. You know, the measure of a black life that, you know, when, when George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin... Uh, you know, everybody was up in arms, everybody protested, you know, people start crying rivers. But when Pookie shot Ray Ray, nobody gives a damn. Thing is, people protested Trayvon because they was wondering, was Trayvon Martin's civil rights violated by George Zimmerman? And it was a justice issue. Did black people protest when Michael Dunn killed uh, Jordan Davis or Jarvis Davis. You know, I, I, I may have gotten his name wrong. If I did, uh, my apologies. But no, they didn't. Maybe some, maybe there was a small enclave. But you know, they arrested Michael Dunn and they charged him. You know, it was simple as that. You know, black people didn't go out riding in the streets because a white man kills a black person. They want to see justice. And if there's no justice, then black people think, then hell, then this is a free-for-all. I shouldn't pay my taxes. If they don't give a fuck, then I don't give a fuck. Now, look at the, the situation with Heidi Hidya, I could have gotten her reign wrong, Pendleton. Now, this was a black woman, a black, a black teenager that was gunned down you know, by most likely a black assailant. I don't know if they caught the culprit yet or not. And yes, a lot of black people was, uh, you know, up in storms. That was a black life that was killed by another black person. Now, you could say that, well, it's a big deal because she performed at Obama's inauguration. You know, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. But still, that was a black life, you know what I'm saying, killed by another black person. And black people was very concerned, you know what I'm saying? They had rallies over that and so forth. You know, they it, it was a topic of discussion. But you can't expect black people to protest every time Pookie shots, shoots little Ray Ray the same way white people don't protest when Dick strangles, rapes, and kills Jane in the white community. It's like the Rodney King thing. Black people didn't go out and riot once they saw that videotape of those four L.A. police officers beating the bejesus out of Rodney King. They rioted when there was no justice. When you had, uh, you know what I'm saying, they had the, the trial in Simi Valley, whatever, with an all-white jury. You know, uh, to get them off. You know what I'm saying? And the, the trial was rigged, just like the George Zimmerman trial. No, you had, what, all these females, you didn't have much, you only had one quote-unquote minority there. And then these females even admitted that George Zimmerman was guilty, but they it's like they wasn't allowed to have a guilty vote, a guilty verdict. And we've seen all sorts of with the Michael Brown case. We see a whole lot of flim-flam there. Multiple autopsy reports. And all uh, things that, you know what I'm saying, there, there's an, an, an nefarious dealings going on, doings going on, that's trying to manipulate information. And now uh, Ferguson, Missouri was a powdered keg waiting to erupt. That's how these things happen. And then we explore, you know what I'm saying, what's going on here? What's wrong here? And, and, and that's the thing. And I think going into the uh, black life isn't working. Like that. I think about the Charles Stewart case, with which I brought this up before. 
Charles Stewart, a man in Boston. This dude was a chef. I think a chef at a very classy restaurant. So he had a lot going for him. You know, his wife had a pretty big insurance policy. He killed his wife and blamed it on the black man. And the whole city wasn't in an uproar. White people wanted blood. A black people was holding their head in shame as if the culprit was their own siblings. And what has happened? Oh yeah, it, 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 with minimum, with a minimum investigation by a female detective who investigated on her own free will. She wasn't even getting paid for it. She thought uh, Charles Stewart's, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, what I'm saying statements was a bunch of cockamamie. But they wanted to close the case. The city officials wanted to close the case. They got some poor, they dragged, got some poor soul, and they was willing to uh, 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 to wrap him up with the crime. So they got him. They wanted to close the case. They didn't give a shit. They didn't care that Charles Stewart was running around getting pedicures and manicures, and he had him a nice uh, a car, bought him a car, and was running around with another female. This is insane. So you telling me this dude, Charles Stewart, who's running around here for and splurging the money of his wife insurance, running around in a new car with another female that did not raise eyebrows of white people suddenly saying that, hey, maybe this black guy didn't do it. Maybe Charles Stewart killed his pregnant wife for the insurance money. And so when this detective, when this female detective, um, you know, so when she questioned this man, there was a man who was supposed to be an accomplice, but he backed out at the last minute and Charles Stewart went ahead and, and did it himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, if you want a job done, you got to do it yourself sometimes. When she questioned this man, she was just questioning him. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't even a, a suspect. This dude cracked. He cracked so hard that he testified. Uh, and then Charles Stewart ended up committing suicide. Now, and this is the reason why the case was, 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 was such an, uh, uh, a phenomenon. That Charles Stewart had made the pages of Wiki. If Charles Stewart was... Um, um, if Charles Stewart was to blame it on a white guy and say, hey, some guy did it, it was a bald headed white guy with a beard, you know, and so forth, you know, people wouldn't be much up in arms. Matter of fact, people would have been like, yeah, right, and would have done a thorough investigation on Charles Stewart himself and, and see what he did. But he just simply blamed a black person. And so, therefore, um, white people themselves, you know what I'm saying, get more outraged when a black person kills them then um you know what I'm saying when one of their own kills their own you know I guess that that's just the human mind same thing goes with uh, Beretta um I forget this guy's name we know about the OJ Simpson case you know what I'm saying and why that case was a big deal because race was involved but there was another man uh, I, I I can't he played Beretta on TV you know what I'm saying he was a washed up celebrity that's like OJ Simpson was a washed up celebrity at the time he committed his murder but you know he still had money and, I, and he killed his wife around <laughs> he killed his wife all evidence point to him but he had a whole lot of money to get off the case why wasn't white people up in arms when Beretta the 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 the, the actor who played Beretta I can't I don't feel like researching his name killed his wife. Um, you know what I'm saying? Then O.J. Simpson. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what I want to say. And then when it comes to the the stop the violence, when Pookie kills Ray Ray, we say that oh black people we don't we don't do nothing. And cities around the country, yeah, you do have gatherings, you have stop the violent marches. It's just not going to make national news. But the thing is, with uh, a lot of the gangbangers. A lot of the criminal degenerates and the delinquents will agree and say, yeah, we need to stop the violence. A lot of gangbangers themselves will actually participate in a stop the violence rally, in a peace rally and so forth. So, you know, that's how it is. Now we're going to go into his uh, statement. He said 80% of black people's problems called by black people themselves. The problems in the black community 
is self-inflicted and uh, and so forth now this is a a, a uh, statement that is sort of tougher to deconstruct it's sort of true but the thing is if you ever took psychology you have to understand how the human mind works now the state of the, the disarray of the what we consider the most impoverished decadent black neighborhoods a lot of people are born into it you know there was things going on before they were born and um, and you know you can't expect a new generation it'll be hard for a, a newer generation of people to um, undo what past generations did you know it's hard but this whole idea of you know problems are self-inflicted black people are too lazy to, to clean up you know the, the, the problem plaguing their community now assuming that you know every black person is from some decadent black community but I can go to any third world hellhole you know, Mexico or Brazil and you know just look up the top 10 most violent cities in the world you know, I don't know, South America appears on there a lot. And I can just tell them, I said, hey, your, your problems are your own. You know, what are you guys complaining about? Why are you guys trying to get over, why are you Mexicans trying to hop over the border to America? You know, I'm saying, why don't you fix your own problems? Stop selling drugs. Stop killing each other. You know, but I understand that, uh, you know, any place where you see violence and disarray, mayhem in the streets now I can show you corrupt politicians I can show you corrupt politics like I said before um, there is corruption when there is corruption on the highest peak of the highest mountain you must understand shit rolls downhill and a lot of these places are plagued you know, with violence, you know what I'm saying? There is a lot of corruption there. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it's not how human beings work. Just to tell them, hey, just stop killing each other. Stop using drugs. You know, and one of the biggest problems in the black community is, is drugs. Why, why don't people, some, they blame the black women, they blame this, but uh, the white man, the almighty white man is unable to, uh, to push drugs out of his community because there's too much of a demand on it. So the most logical thing there is, is for, um, is for the government to legalize drugs. And I, I made videos on this. You know, this is what a lot of places in Europe did. And when they did this, um, it, uh, they shut down prisons and jail cells. The majority of black men are in jail is because of drugs. Drug dealers killing other drug dealers drug money, financing gangs, and so forth. And then the same thing with the white community. You know, there are white communities that are run down that have been completely devastated with drugs, with meth. Particularly one white uh, town, uh, Crawfordsville, Indiana, you know, known as Meth Central. It's where some white dude killed an 18 year old girl because he was afraid she was going to snitch on him for, for telling on him of his meth lab. Now, I've been to that city. I'm like, it's not pretty, but this is not the postcard image white people are going to put out for themselves. You know, with black people, we'll take our most, um, our most pitiful, uh, our most despicable image and behavior and put it out there on Front Street. You know what I'm saying? For people to scrutinize, you know, criticize, and sometimes laugh at, and gouge at. Hardy, har, har, har. So it, it, it's not that easy. Now, especially when you're dealing with the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the, you know what I'm saying? The brown, the brown and black people, or octamaroon, or burnt orange, or whatever color they want to call us. Um, we, we got serious problems. From South America to Brazil. All ex-European colonies. And the black people in um, Europe. Oh no, in Canada. Now they never, they never had this problem. Now I'm not saying Canadians can't be racist because I know what they did to the Aboriginals. 
part of the Native Americans that well they call the Native Americans Aboriginals. But you know, you've seen a, a, a good uh, uh, a striving uh, a black commonwealth in Canada. And you don't even hear about it. A lot of people don't know that there was black people in Canada. No, there was black people who escaped slavery and lived in Canada and had generations of black people that lived in Canada. In Canada. Why don't I understand with the influx of hip hop culture, there's black Canadians wanting to, to portray this image. You know, I understand that. But, you know what I'm saying, for a while they were silent. We didn't hear about it. We didn't know that. Because they didn't have guns. That's what people want to see. People don't want to see black people acting peaceful. The media doesn't want. So we have to uh, accept what the media, their interpretation of us, of, of Africa. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to hear about a black civilization being peaceful and just beating the, the, the bongo drums or whatever. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, and just having their dances and... Uh, Getting along, they don't care about that. You know, it's like David Carroll. He talks about black women and, uh, and black men interactions with each other. You know, and I would say that in Western society, black men and white men, men, men and female relationships are at an all-time low. You know, I'm like the 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 feminist, the feminist movement. I'm like they, they <laughs> have gone postal. What about these white feminists? That that video they put out there with the little girls cussing. Could you imagine if black women did that? You know, and these feminists are running around here. So I say, why can't the white man control his white women? You know, you got these feminists out here echoing the mantra of the black nationalists. These feminists are running around here talking about white supremacy and capitalism. White supremacy and capitalism. White women. You know, and I would say the best male-female relationships I'd see is with African immigrants and Mexican immigrants. And I know white people aren't even can't even maintain their population, their their birth rate, and so forth. But if I was to film a video of two black couple, of a black couple, or me and my girlfriend, you know, sitting down in Starbucks or uh, Panera Bread, having us some soup having us a, a Joe, that will get negative views. That won't just get zero views. That will get negative 200 views. <laughs> Unprecedented. Uh, but if I was to show two black men and two black women fighting each other on the subway, of course, that would go crazy. And people would say, this is how black people act. This is psychological warfare. And I can't wait till I start producing these videos that term Negro by being called Negro uh, and the thing is I never heard another black man freely use that word Negro until I came to YouTube because I always thought that was a feminine word um, you know what I'm saying like when women get mad at men they say hey you Negro and also one thing that, that uh, David Carl does and the, the fantastic for the greater men do to mute their opposition is to say that men been raised up by single mothers. Single mothers. Men are feminine. Single mothers. But me, myself, you know, everybody knows that I had a very, uh, my father was a disciplinarian. And that's an understatement. So I had a problem with his. And I'm telling you, when I was watching his videos, I did not have it in my mind to make some of a rebuttal. Because I was done. You know what I'm saying? I was like, it's beating a dead horse. But since I am on my path to intellectualism, I thought I would share my thoughts and views of my recent uh, romp with David Carl's videos. I'm not calling him any names. This is not a beef vid. This is just someone disagreeing with the intellectual juggernaut. Thanks for watching and sally forth.